Good morning, and welcome to St. David's Sunday Worship Online. Now as we gather together here online after another stressful week, let's let go of all of our problems and all of our worries, and recount all of our blessings as we place ourselves in the presence of God. Morning Prayer, Proper 21. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Now we continue the service with the Invitory and Psalter Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Praying together a portion of Psalm 100, the Jubilate. The earth is the Lord's, for he has made it. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The earth is the Lord's, for he has made it. Come, let us adore him. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with the people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning, I'm Joe Pickard, a member of St. Aidan's and captain of the St. Aidan's Doers. For the past two years, our parish has supported Team World Vision's efforts to raise money for clean water in Africa. The need is greater than ever, given the coronavirus pandemic's impact on Africa. And to help us kick off the 2020-21 campaign, we invited Kaylee Vanderbon, Los Angeles Area Director for Team World Vision, to share her thoughts with us today as our guest homilist. I think it's safe to say that our regularly scheduled lives have been interrupted over the past several months, that it feels like a season of waiting, a season of pause, but not the fun vacation, relaxing kind of pause, the stressful distance learning, working from home, learning how to work and to go to school and to be parents and teachers and everything all at once kind of waiting and pause waiting for schools to get back in session waiting to go back to work just waiting 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 in fact teachers teachers and parents who have become teachers or teachers who are parents this is a group of people that have been on my mind and my heart a lot through this season. I used to be a teacher and I just can't imagine what some of the teachers and students and parents are up against in this season and time and the adjustments and shifts that have been made to make learning possible in this season. When I was a teacher, I taught seventh and eighth grade math and then eventually high school as well. And one of the classes that I taught was for students who did not pass the high school exit exam in the area of math. Now, back in the day when we had a high school exit exam in California, the students who ended up in that class, it was very discouraging, right? They're in that class because they hadn't passed it yet and we need to get them to pass that test to be able to graduate from high school with a diploma. So we talked about, of course, about math, but this test covers math from uh, kindergarten up to uh, 10th grade. So there's a lot of math to cover, so you can't always depend on going through skills. Sometimes you have to depend on test-taking strategies. So I want you to think back to when you were in school, or maybe you're in school right now, and think about what was one of the first things that you were taught when it comes to taking like a test-taking strategy, like if it's a multiple choice. 
one of the first things that we're taught is if you see an answer that looks right to you and you're not sure what the answer is, to trust your first instinct, to trust your gut reaction to that question because there's probably a reason that that question looks familiar to you or you know, it's probably because of something that you've learned, right? And I think this is something that we're taught a lot as a society. First impressions, trust your gut, trust your instincts. And there are places for those things, absolutely. And sometimes you're trained in things and that's why you're able to trust your gut because you've had training and practice and all of those things make sense. I don't wanna invalidate those things. In fact, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, I'm gonna read a quote for you guys, who has spent an incredible time talking about first impressions and just things that happen in our brains, the processes in just the blink of an eye. He says, there can be as much value in the blink of an eye as in months of rational analysis. Now, these things are all true, but there is a slight problem with this reaction that we have to trust our gut, to trust our instincts. And that is that we were people as Christians who believe that we were born of a sinful nature, that we were born sinners. And in that, that sometimes our gut reaction is not the reaction that Jesus is calling us to, that sometimes our reactions are that of sin, or that sometimes our reactions are are our own human reactions and not the reaction that our God is calling us to. Uh, when in the passage that was read from Matthew, Jesus is telling a story uh, and he's speaking to religious leaders who are maybe not practicing, not implementing the calling of Jesus in reality, just only in appearance. He talks about the two sons, the one son who says, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go to the vineyard, but then he ultimately does follow through and do what he's being asked to do. And then the other son who says, I will do it, but doesn't actually do it. Jesus says, the first son is the one who's actually following the calling because even though his first reaction, his first instinct was of, of sin, no, I'm not gonna do that. He came around and he was able to say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do that because that's what I'm being asked to do. And I think in the context of this that we as Christians have a higher calling, a calling to look beyond our sinner's reaction of no or of this is the right way to handle it and, and to look and see what is, even sometimes it's not necessarily wrong, it's just not our calling from Jesus, from our Lord. So we have a calling to look beyond and see what is Jesus calling me to do? What is God calling me to step into in this space? And what does that look like? And I think that's just beautiful because if we weren't given the opportunity to change our minds on things, then there would be no space for growth. There would be no way to change moving forward. And that is one of the most beautiful things are transformational stories that you hear. We all love them, but they require a shift in perspective, a shift in thought. And that is our, our calling is to be looking at what, through everything, what is God calling us into? Last year, at about this time, members from St. Aidan's allowed their lives to be interrupted. They allowed their lives to be interrupted by setting aside time to train for the LA Marathon and Charity Challenge and raise money for kids to have clean water all over the world. Members from St. Aidan's raised over $14,000. 280 kids who now don't have to spend their days walking six kilometers for dirty water. 280 kids who go to go to school because they don't have to spend their days walking for water on behalf of the children that we serve. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much. COVID-19 is itself is scary, right? But in addition to the disease, it's predicted that the secondary effects of COVID-19 will actually, in the vulnerable communities where World Vision works, will actually put more kids' lives at risk than the disease itself. What, and what is one of the number one ways we've been told from the very beginning to, pre to prevent the spread of COVID? To wash our hands, 
but how can you wash your hands if you don't have access to running clean water? In 2018, I had the chance to see the uh, effects, the impact that dirty water has on a community in Zambia. I met a woman named Agnes, who was the only healthcare provider of, in her entire community. She would see up to 80 patients a day and did not have access to running clean water at the clinic where she worked. She told stories of delivering babies, one baby and then the other, but not having access to running clean water to wash her hands with in between, in between baby deliveries. How can the spread of disease be prevented without access to clean water? Friends, this is the reality in over 50% of the healthcare facilities in the regions where World Vision works, that healthcare workers do not have access to running clean water to wash their hands in between patients. And then when we shift our focus to right here at home, we're dealing with our own set of secondary effects from COVID-19. We're isolated, we're stressed, we're working on distance learning, we're trying to sort through this. But if you do a simple Google search of improved mental health, 10 out of the top 10 articles that pop up will recommend exercise as a way to improve mental health. Eight out of 10 recommend giving to others as a way to improve mental health. All of this together, COVID, the secondary effects of COVID globally and locally can feel like a lot. And that we have had such an interruption on what we're trying to accomplish in this world over the past several years, over the past several months. But I can't help but wonder if maybe this isn't just an interruption, but rather an invitation into something greater, an invitation into allowing our, our lives to be interrupted for a reason, an invitation into something greater that maybe we have to take a moment and set and listen for what God is calling us to do in this season and in this time. And maybe this is something that God's asking you that maybe it will feel like no way is your first reaction. And then listen and see, maybe God is calling this you to this in this season. And so I'd like to invite you to train, to go through an incredible training experience with us that will lead up to an epic race experience. Right now, that race experience is scheduled to be the LA Marathon on March 21st, 2021. We're we'll doing this on behalf of children who need clean water around the world. But some of you are looking at me like, LA Marathon in March? No way that that's gonna be able to happen. And I can't predict the future, but I can say that races don't lie, save lives, you do. And no matter what, we will have an epic race experience. We will wear our orange jerseys. We will celebrate your yes and your training and the life changed through your steps, no matter what this season might look like. All I'm asking is that you maybe take a minute and see, is this what God, what God is calling to me to in this season that feels like waiting, but maybe it's a chance for us to shift our focus. Uh, our founder of Team World Vision, Michael Chitwood, he puts it this way, in a world where it feels like we're just waiting, maybe this is a time for us to say, we're not gonna be waiting on this. We're not gonna wait for the global water crisis to end. We're going to step into action. And we're not just gonna survive this pandemic. We are going to help others <laughs> survive this pandemic going to look back on this time and see the changes that were made because of your yes. So I'm inviting you to say yes long enough to text into our info session. Immediately following the service, you can watch the info session video that will be available to you when you click on the link and a form to fill up, fill out so that we can follow up and provide you with any information that you might need. So right now, yep, go ahead right now, take out your phones and you're going to text the number 44888. That's 44888 with the message St. Aiden. Again, that's 44888 with the message St. Aiden. And that will direct you to a form that has an info session video as well as some questions to fill out so that we can follow up with you. I believe that God will use this season 
to transform broken circumstances right here at home and around the world. We are in this together and I hope you say yes to this invitation. Thank you so much for having me today. Please join with me as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Prayers of the People Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. For healing and care we pray for Everly, Everly Nicholas, Nicholas, Trudy, Trudy Pepperdine, Pepperdine Community, community Jessica, Jessica, the Maxwell, Maxwell family, family, the Stone, Stone family, family, Tori, Tori Mark, Deborah, Deborah Don, Don, Louis, Rick, Rick Ernie, Ernie, Linda, Ross, Ross Lorraine, Jan, Jan, Beth, Beth Kendra, Kendra, Dayton, Dayton Eileen, Eileen, Father Wendell, Wendell Jillian, Jillian, Jonathan, Jonathan Peggy, Peggy, the victims, victims of violence, violence, the victims, victims of, the of the coronavirus. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. For those who have died, we pray for Angela, Angela Sis, Sis, Melanie, Melanie the, the victims, victims of violence, violence the, the victims, victims of the, of the coronavirus. coronavirus. Lord, for these petitions, spoken and unspoken, and those known only to you, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The Collect for Today. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that your people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. May the eternal God, the source of all blessing, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you and your loved ones on this day and always. Amen. Good morning. Good to see you all again. A few notes this morning, and it's all good news. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, wonderful talk by Kaylee. Thank you very much this morning. Kaylee from World Vision. Uh, remember, you don't have to run 13 miles uh, just to contribute, so uh, do that anyway. Uh, Harvest of Hope, it's coming together really well, thanks to a band of loyal volunteers. What an extravaganza, it's gonna be great. Save the date, November the 1st. And it was funny, wasn't it? Through the miracle of recording, we were able to see Joyce, as if she was here with us this morning even though she's winnow bay going uh, through Ohio. <laughs> Corn and soybeans, yes. Oh, October the 4th is St. Francis Day when we bless the animals. So get your photos into Susan as soon as you can. And I'm thinking now there's a time when virtual services are a real improvement. I don't have to go around and clean up afterwards. <laughs> That reminds me, I had a friend who worked for the circus and uh, 
he used to go behind the elephants and clean up after them, you know. And I said to him, why don't, why don't you get a better job? And he said, what? And leave show business? <laughs> well, that's all, folks. Stay safe. Stay faithful to Jesus Christ. Wear your mask and vote. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.